Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's share file webinar. We are so excited you're here with us. We have some great content to share with you today, and we'll also be saving some time for your questions. So please ask your questions in the Q&A console at any time during our webinar, and we'll do our best to answer them. Taking you through some of our favorite ShareFile features, along with a live demo, we have Tepe Unemo. And now I will pass it off to him. Hi folks, my name is Tepe Umeno and I am a senior customer success engineer. My role at Citrix is to assist customers with the onboarding and adoption of the Citrix Cloud products. Uh, and today I wanted to talk to you about three ways you can get the most out of your ShareFile account. And I'm gonna start off by going over what ShareFile exactly is, and then go into the user management tool uh, the Citrix files for Outlook and Citrix files for Windows and Mac. And then after that, I'll go through a uh, brief demo of all three of those tools. So what is ShareFile? ShareFile is our content collaboration tool that allows you to unify all your content in one location, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise, or if it's in OneDrive, Google Drive, Network Shares, or other solutions. And allows you to access your data from any location or any device securely. The first tool I wanted to talk about is an administrative tool called the User Management Tool. The User Management Tool allows you to provision users into ShareFile using Active Directory groups. And with policy based administration, it makes it easy to create users based on unique use cases. Uh, these include things like administrative privileges, e signature options, and storage location. And the tool also allows you to create distribution groups to simplify managing folder permissions. Next, we have Citrix files for Outlook which is an Outlook plugin that makes it easy to attach files into email securely. It also allows you to attach large files into emails without worrying about uh, email server storage issues. This plugin also is very simple to use and easy to incorporate into your normal workflow. And finally, we also have the Citrix files for Windows and Mac. Uh, and this tool allows you to access files without fully syncing your data to your local devices. Uh, if needed, users can also mark files and folders for offline access and check out files to prevent unwanted changes. And provides a, a unified experience across multiple devices. Okay, so let's dive into our demo. And let's see. So first of all, let's look at the share file control plane. So under the admin settings and policies, you'll see user access, file and folder management and storage location. And this is where you can create those use case specific use cases and administrative permissions for your users. So for example, if I look at my default policy, it's very restrictive, only allows the users access to uh, manage clients, view the shared address book and uh, create distribution groups. And then we look at the support group and we see that uh, the users have access to maybe more of like the e-signature options as well as employee access and then reporting features. So file and folder management. This is going to be the policies for the default folder settings. And you can control things like the retention policy on the folder as well as the number of versions available for each individual file. 
And then finally, we have storage locations and uh, sets a default storage location for your users. Okay, next let's dive into the, uh, the user management tool. So if we look at the user management tool, you're going to see your dashboard. It's going to show you who you're logged into on the share file side and on the Active Directory side and the, the last runtime for the tool itself. So let's go ahead and see if we can create a, uh, a scheduled task here to uh, automate the provisioning process. So I've already got a few AD groups created in here, and I want to create a rule for this share file support group. So what I'm going to do, I am going to hit add rule here, and because we want to create both a user rule and a distribution group rule, I'm going to select this bottom one. And then you can see how you that the policies show up that we saw earlier. And obviously we're going to select support here and let's say we'll set these users to US East as their default location. You can even set things like the default company name if you need to. Um, and things like notifying employees of the, the share file user account provisioning. And we're going to leave that off here for now. So this is the distribution group rules um, and allows you to create the distribution group inside share file and then to update that group membership based on the AD group. OK. So if we go to the rules tab, you'll see that we have the share file support user provisioning rule here at the bottom. And then if we go to the groups rule, we see the group rule here. There. Now with the policy based administration, you want to make sure you set up the, the permission hierarchy here. And we want to make sure that the, the top group is going to be the one that takes priority in the provisioning process. So we'll move that support group up to in the, the order. If we hit refresh here, we can see the changes that the the rule the uh, the tool is trying to commit to. And let's go ahead and schedule a task. So what we'll want to do is we'll hit schedule task. And let's just call this share file UMT. And I want it to run continuously. All right, so if we go into task scheduler, there's our uh, scheduled task that we created. And it, if you look at the properties here, you'll notice that the the scheduled task is running uh, only when the user is logged in. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure you set this to whether the user is logged on or not. And then you'll want to also take a look at the triggers um, and edit this if you need to. So for example, let's say we want to run this repeatedly every 30 minutes or so. And hit OK. And since I don't want to make the changes here, I'm just going to hit cancel here. If you wanted to manually run the, the tool, you can. You just hit commit now. And then on the bottom left, you'll see how the changes are being committed to share file. And it looks like the tool went through without any issues. So if we open up our share file account again, you'll see that our share file support group has been updated. And then our users have been created. And we look at the 
user policies, and you'll see that it's set to the ones that we uh, asked for it to be in the user management tool. Okay, so let's, next let's take a look at the uh, Outlook plugin. So the Outlook plugin uh, allows you to automatically attach share file links into your emails. So for example, if we take a look here, we can just drag in these files to the email. And you can see that the detachment did get converted, right? And that is because in our options here, for the share file plugin, we have it set so that the attachments will only convert after the, the files, the attachments go over five megabytes. So let's try this. So if we go back to the email and then let's go ahead and add the Citrix files for Windows to the email as well. And then there you go. So you see that the share file plugin automatically converted the attachments to a, uh, a share file link. And then from here, you can just Keep typing your uh, email and send it out like a any old regular email. Now another thing you can do, you can also change the settings for these links um, by going into the, the settings for the Outlook plugin. Now this is for the the individual email that you just sent, but you can set things like you know, whether this is a lot anonymous access without login, uh, you can set it to have a login, require login, as well as any kind of expiration policy for the files, as well as the limit the number of downloads available for uh, the link. And you can also set things like um, the, the login policy here for any kind of d the default settings for your Outlook plugin as well. So you can set it so that, you know, the default option is that anyone with a name and email can access the links, or you can even set it so that like only employee users can access uh, the files and uh, a login is required. Another thing you can do with the Outlook plugin is if you go to the admin settings, you can also set the, the default settings for the Outlook plugin. So under admin settings, advanced preferences, and enable share file tools, you'll see configure plugin and from here you can set the default policy for the outlook plugin um, you can even set things like the um, attachment policies so you can always set it to like always always uh, make any attachment a share file link and then you can also prevent those changes on the plugin itself. And you can do this for anything like the link options as well as how the links are inserted into the to the emails as well. Okay, next let's look at the share file sync tool. Or sorry, the share file uh, um, Citrix files for Windows and Mac. So Citrix files for Windows or Mac, just a desktop application that allows you to access your 
uh, your share file items or content through your Windows Explorer or Finder. And the great thing about this tool is that it allows you to access it without syncing any of the data down to your, your local machine. And so, for example, like here, you can see that um, there's, there's also these green icons next to these folders. That's because I've made these folders available offline as well. So you can select even folders or just uh, files available for offline as well. So if we go in to, let's say, the ShareFile US East folder, I've made this right signature test file uh, available for offline access. And you can also do things like um, manage the folder permissions for uh, from within the Citrix files application as well too. Another great tool is the check-in, check-out feature. So let's say I'm making some changes to this document. I don't want anyone to be uh, making modifications to that file during that time. So I can check out this file. And during this 24-hour period, no user will be able to upload a new version of this file until I check the, the file back in. So there you go. Once the file is checked out, you'll see that little red icon indicating that it's checked out. And then when I'm ready, I can check it back in. And uploading files is just as easy. All you have to do is you can just, you know, just treat it like any old regular file as well too, uh, folder. You just drag and drop and it'll upload the file directly to share file. Now, another great tool is that the Citrix files application allows you to uh, set group policy settings, such as um, mounting points. So I have my OneDrive folder available as a T drive. And I can go in here and I can access all my OneDrive content directly from ShareFile and the Citrix Files application. So you have things like the mounting point where I have set the default uh, drive letter for the Citrix Files application, as well as the mounting point for the OneDrive connector. You can also do things like prefetch metadata so that uh, when your users are on a uh, local machine and you want to make sure that they're not interrupted during the day trying to wait for a folder to load, you can do the prefetch metadata option. You can also do um, offline access being disabled for example, in a you know, virtual apps or virtual desktop scenario, you don't want that offline access available to your users, then you can disable that. And yeah, I think this is about it for the Citrix files application as well. Um, hopefully these demos were useful to you guys. But um, yeah, let's go into uh, some questions now. Um, a lot of information to share, and um, I appreciate all of you being here today to hear Tepe and go over those features. Um, we have had a ton of questions come in, and they're still coming in, so I'm going to uh, start at the top, and I will get through as many as we can get through. Um, so, Tepe, we're going to start with the user management tool, and can you remind our users uh, how you access the user management tool, and is this tool only for admins? Yeah, so this tool is only for administrative users um, for provisioning 
Sharefile users into your your Sharefile tenant, uh, and you can access the the tool itself from the uh, Citrix downloads page. It is a restricted um, download, so you'll have to uh, authenticate as a uh, admin into the Citrix portal to get it. Great, thank you. And um, what should I do if I do not see the options for policies or connectors in my admin settings? If you don't see your uh, policies in the admin settings, then you can contact our, our uh, technical support team or your uh, customer success manager, and they should be able to get that enabled for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, what tool would you, or feature would you recommend I use with my clients when they need to upload files for me? Um, just trying to understand how I can get out of email and and utilize what um, all the things that ShareFile has to offer with with sharing files. Yeah, you can use the Outlook plugin. Um, so the Outlook plugin also has a feature to request files inside the uh, the tool itself so it's not just for sending documents uh, and another way to do it is it, even in like the citrix files application or the the browser version of sharefile there's a option to generate a, a request link in there great thank you um moving on to um citrix files for outlook slash the outlook plugin um so can you just remind everyone how they get that added to their outlook account yeah so you can download the outlook plugin um through again the citrix downloads page and that one should be available publicly um you don't need to be a uh, administrator in order to access that document Sorry, not document, but uh, install file. But um, it, if you did want to install it um, like uh, through an MSI, we do have that available um, on that download page, page as well too. Is there, um, are there plugin versions for other email clients like Gmail? We do. Um, we have a Gmail plugin. Um, it is only a, a web version, and uh, I, I might need to get back to you on that one. But um, I believe there's also a a online um, Office 365 version as well. Okay, great. Uh, and then when you send files with using the Citrix files for Outlook plugin, um, is is it HIPAA compliant? The HIPAA compliance is going to be dependent on your uh, ShareFile tenant. So if your ShareFile tenant, your, your ShareFile account is on our HIPAA cloud solution, then uh, when you use the Outlook plugin, it will strip away any kind of uh, like information about the, the files itself, and it should be a, a HIPAA compliant um, solution. Okay, great. Um, okay, moving on to um, Citrix files for Windows and Mac. Uh, is there a way for users to see who have access to who in the company has access to shared folders? Uh, right now, only our admins can see who can access folders. Yeah, uh, let's see. That one might be easier if I share my screen. Just give me one second. Okay, so can you guys see my screen here? We can see it. Okay, great. So if you're an admin on a particular folder, then let's say, for example, that ShareFile US East folder, um, you can, first of all, go to the top section here and see people on this folder. And it'll list uh, who has access. Um, that should be able to provide you kind of that, that idea of who has access to it. You can also do it on the, there's a Citrix files application too. Uh, let's see, I think I showed this to you guys earlier, but so 
Same thing, right click on it and manage permissions. And you'll be able to see it there. Great, thank you for showing that to us. And while you're in there, uh, it might be helpful to show this next question as well. Um, how can I connect my SharePoint and ShareFile accounts? Yeah, so if you're in your ShareFile admin account, um, you'll go into your admin settings and then under connectors, you'll see a uh, list of available connectors for you. And you can do the OneDrive for Business, for example. And then you'll need to provide a URL kind of similar to like this. And um, once it's created, then it's going to ask on the uh, permission from Microsoft to install this application um, on your Office 365 tenant. And uh, once you hit OK, then you can manage the permission to the connector itself through the, the ShareFile portal right here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, the questions are coming in quick, so I'm trying to kind of condense them so everyone gets the most value out of this. Um, sure. Can you show how to add a shared folder to a new user? Shared folder to a new user, okay. So I'm gonna go in um, kind of thinking of it in a way where let's say you don't know if the user is on the share file tenant already or not. So let's say you're in here and you wanna share this folder out. So you'll go to people on this folder and then add people to folder. And you know, you can you can search for them. So for example, let's say Brian. Do I have a Brian on here? No. Okay. Then what I'll do is Brian Galetta. Oh, oh please. And I'll do Brian at sharefile.com. Let's just do Citrix. And then I hit, let's say I want to give him just view only access to this. And then I'll hit, want to make sure he's notified of the use, the, the add to the folder. And then just hit add. And then it'll just go through. And then once he's added like that, then uh, in this case, Brian will get an email saying that he's been added to the share file account and he needs to set up his user account. And then he should have access to the folder itself. Awesome. Thank you so much for showing that. Um, mm -hmm. We have about one more minute, so I'm gonna ask um, a security question and then I will I'll let everyone go. So. Is the security and encryption uh, with ShareFile strong enough to send documents with social security numbers or bank account numbers? Uh, yes, it is. Um, so again, if you're sending in, sending out, you know, like uh, personal information through ShareFile, then I would suggest getting a the HIPAA solution. So Make sure that you're on the HIPAA cloud of ShareFile, which prevents it from showing any of the the uh, personal information in the email itself or anything like that. And uh, when you can restrict your ShareFile account to have uh, login required for all downloads, so that if uh, if they get like a download link on the other end, you know that it's going to the the uh, correct uh, recipient. Uh, 
Well, thank you again, Tebe, for your expertise today. And thank you all for spending time with us to learn more about ShareFile. Uh, yes, you will be receiving an email with the recording of this webinar in the next day or so. Um, and as a reminder, we do have a webinar next week as well, same time uh, and place. Uh, the time is noon Eastern. And next week, we're going to be doing a 15-minute feature spotlight of Citrix files for Outlook. So I know a lot of our attendees today did have some um, more questions about the Outlook plugin. Um, next week's topic is just that. Uh, it's just 15 minutes all about um, Citrix files for Outlook. So please feel free to join us next week. I'm gonna put that registration link um, in the chat feature right now. Um, so you should have that if you wanna register, if you already have it. Um, and then we do have some more webinars coming up in September as well. So please feel free to check out citrix.com slash events, and you'll see um, all the webinars that we have for ShareFile upcoming in September. So with that, I will let everyone go, and until next time, have a great day.